With me in the studio, Environment Minister Catherine McKenna. So, Minister, I know you played a very big role in the Paris talks, achieving that accord. But a lot of critics say that it's largely empty promises because there are no legally binding uh, commitments to actually reduce greenhouse gas emissions. How do you respond to those critics? Uh, well, I just I, I think that's not true. We had 195 countries that came together that made commitments to reduce emissions that that really believe that this is the time when we need to act. And the reality is, in the international context, in any agreement, it's very hard to have sanctions. But every five years, countries have to come back. They have to improve on their targets. And there's going to be transparency and accountability. So if they don't improve, they aren't meeting their targets, it's going to be there for the whole world to see. And what was interesting in Paris, uh, I was there with business uh, representatives, environmental NGOs, indigenous peoples, uh, youth, and provinces and territories. And everyone's going to be watching. So you will have the, the ability for people to put a lot of pressure if countries don't, uh, don't actually take the action but they said. But people will argue, yes, that's true true but there are no penalties if you don't meet the commitments other than you know people saying hey you didn't do it well, I mean, I think that, that there will be a lot of pressure uh, on countries to do their part. I think that there are other ways that, uh, you know, governments can, you know, create uh, incentives or disincentives that I'd say. So, for example, $100 million is committed to help developing countries adapt uh, to the impacts of climate change. And so we're creating a positive incentive there. Except that I think only like $13 billion has actually been raised of the $100 billion that's supposed to be raised. Um, it's actually 60, 60 billion, and if you look at it, so the OECD did a report where they looked at it's not just government money, it's leveraging private sector money. So I think that we're confident that that money will be there, and we actually said developing countries, including Canada, said that we're going to commit that money, and that is, is the minimum for the, the next five years, so 20 to 25 as well. And I think that money is already flowing. You also saw in Paris, you had billionaires like Mark Zuckerberg uh, and Bill Gates uh, creating what was called Mission Innovation where they're going to put you know, significant funding into renewables, into clean tech. And we're part of that. So Canada is going to double its investment in clean technology. So you see momentum. Like This isn't, you know, in the past when you had agreements, international agreements, first of all, not every country was at the table. Developing countries didn't have commitments. But also you didn't have this momentum. And I really see that this momentum, it was in Paris where everyone came together, and it's also in Canada. So now it's not just a niche issue. You have big businesses. We had, you know, we have CEOs that are saying it is time to put a price on carbon. It's time to look at renewables. So I think that there's a huge momentum, and I think there's a huge will to move forward. Well, I think you're right on that because you could mm -hmm. see what happened in Alberta when the business, the oil industry, came together with Premier Notley, uh, first ever to really develop a plan for Alberta to deal with greenhouse gas emissions. But now you have a major challenge ahead. Mm -hmm. You've got 90 days to come up with uh, a, a, a Canadian plan when you meet the premiers. I'm assuming you meet the environment ministers first, and when would that take place? Well, so I already have met with the environment ministers. I've, ha I've had calls with each of them. I met many of them in Paris, and I hosted a dinner. Uh, so we've already ha started the conversation. We have officials that are doing good work for us. We're going to have a meeting at the end of January uh, where we're going to set the stage for where can we move forward, where are the opportunities, so that when the, the premiers uh, meet with the prime minister, that there are you know deliverables there, and we've already worked towards this framework. And it's going to be, it, it is really important. Um, that we, we start the work now. 90 days is not, uh, it's not a long time. The clock is ticking. But I see that we're making progress. And the, and the provinces and territories have already come out with, a, with plans. Most of them have plans. And I've talked to uh, provinces and territories about the direction they want to go, how we can support them. So I think there's a huge opportunity to work together. So when we're looking at, at, a, at a federal plan, because as you say, every province is starting to develop theirs. In BC, it's, it's a carbon tax, it's cap and trade in Ontario and Quebec. Um, so are, are we going to have some kind of national standards that you're hoping to set for a price on carbon? Is, is that what we're looking at? Well, so we have committed. Them? So we have committed to put a price on carbon. But as you say, there are provinces and territories who have gone in different directions, and so we need to just make sure that across the board that that there is a price on carbon. We're still trying to figure out how it's going to work because we don't want to derail what provinces, the good work that provinces and territories uh, are already doing. And provinces have been leading. The federal government is playing catch up, but we have said that we want to have a national price. So we're figuring out, you know, exactly what that will look like. But that 
that is a commitment of ours. So uh, some people would argue that the economy is not in good shape right now. Um, you know, the oil prices have crashed. Interest, uh, the U.S. has raised interest rates. Our dollar is, is, is in a slump. That maybe now is not the time to be adding more uh, a price on carbon because it could hurt the economy. What's your view on that? Well, so we've been clear, the economy and the environment go together, and so we need to be thoughtful about how we do these things. But the reality is, if we want to get our resources to market, we need to be demonstrating that we can do it in an environmentally sustainable way, and we need to be creating the right incentives. Uh, and so a price on carbon is sending the signal that we need to be moving towards renewables to a low-carbon economy and also fostering innovation. And so. One other thing that came out of Paris that is really important, when you have 195 countries saying, you know, we're moving to a low carbon economy, the markets will follow. So this isn't just about governments, you know, imposing things and governments, you know, deciding how, what it's going to look like. We're going to see significant investment from the private sector in renewables, in new technology that will reduce emissions, and that will make a real difference too. I'm also, I've been discussing uh, with my Mexican and U.S. counterparts about how we have a North American strategy. Strategy. And that's a key one, isn't it, yeah. really? I mean, if you can get the Americans and, and the Mexicans on side for a North American Climate Accord, like we did with the Asset Rain Treaty, we're going to make real progress. Yeah, it, so it's, real, it's really important that we align. And I think that what's great is there is momentum with the U.S. and Mexico uh, to do this. I had great conversations with my counterparts. And it also ensures that we maintain the competitiveness of Canadian business. That is really important. We don't want to disadvantage Canadian business. In fact, we see this as a massive opportunity for Canadian business because if we can innovate and find solutions, and we already have a number of companies that are doing great things in, in clean tech, we can export that. So it's a real opportunity for us to be out in the world marketing our products, you know, bringing, creating jobs for Canadians. Minister, thank you very much for coming in. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Have a great holiday. You too. Thanks.